कृष्ण गुरु महाराज हरे कृष्ण गुरु महाराज प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माय हम्बल ऑब्सेंसेस ऑल ग्लोरी टू श्री प्रभुपाद ओ ग्लोरी टू प्रभुपाद माय ऑब्सेंसेस हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण गुरु महाराज आई विल शेयर माय स्क्रीन ओके Continuation of the chapter on Madhya Lila, twenty-two. Uh, this is verse one o one. Chapter is entitled "Devotional Service." <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Tava Smiti Vadam Pacha Vai Tataiva Manasa Vidam Tatstanam Arvatastanva Modite Saranagataha. Translation One whose body is fully surrendered. Take shelter at the holy places where Krishna has his pastimes, and he prays to the Lord, "My Lord, I am yours." Understanding this with his mind, he enjoys spiritual bliss. So this verse is from Shila Hari Bhakti Vilas, which is composed by Sanatan Goswami. So one very essential point is mamata, or as it says here. Uh, Sarana Agata, fully surrendered, uh, with Manasa, with mind, fully surrendered in mind. So this statement alone is a principle of surrender, and as it says here, when one sincerely offers this prayer. I am yours. That person enjoys spiritual happiness because it reconnects us with who we are and what is our relationship with Krishna. We belong only to Krishna. We don't belong to this world. And anything and anyone, anyone in the world, we belong to Krishna. <laughs> That is our eternal position and principle of eternal happiness. Okay, so one who makes this statement enjoys spiritual bliss. <laughs> Next verse. Sarnalanga kara Krishna atma samarpana Krishna tadikari tadkale. Atma Sama. When the devotee thus fully surrenders to Krishna's lotus feet, Krishna accepts him as one of his confidential servants. And the word again is fully surrendered. <laughs> Not just surrender, but fully surrender. That means that, and that's indicated in the previous verse. Krishna, I'm yours. Do with anything you want with me. Engage me in your service in whatever way you want. I am yours. As Lord Chaitanya prays, as Lishyava Pinaratam Punas Tumam, the Darshanam Marmhatam Karo Tuva. Yata tata vavidada tu lampato mat pranam nastu sarevanapadaha. That statement is actually the mood of Shrimati Radharani's love for Krishna. Uh, uh, the word is, well, the actual translation is, um, let me think. 
It's, it's the last verse in the Shikshastik and prayers. Uh, you can kick me, you can break me, you can make, make me broken hearted before uh, I am yours completely. So uh, uh, whatever you do to me, that's fine because it doesn't matter. Uh, I belong to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is full surrender. And it's the highest form of surrender where there is completely complete selflessness and complete surrender to, to the will of Krishna. Next verse. And then here, well, let me just say one more thing. Krishna accepts one as one as one as his confidential servant. So that's a very elevated position to be a, a confidential associate of the Lord. It's not an easy position to attain. But here's one of the qualifications: complete and full surrender. And that, that can only happen when one has a uh, a good understanding of Krishna, who he is, what is his nature, what is his qualities. Once we learn these things, then full surrender becomes natural. <laughs> when you don't know much about Krishna, and you don't know really how he does things, then it's very difficult to come to the point of full surrender. Therefore, that the foundation for for coming to what we call mamata, my dear Lord, I belong to you, is um, knowing Krishna completely, not perfectly, no one can know Krishna perfectly, but to enough where uh, one becomes, uh, what we say, fully Krishna conscious. In other words, they can only think of Krishna, and they can only serve Krishna, and they can only act on behalf of Krishna. And it's a confidential servant. Okay. Confidential associate, even more intimate than servant. Martaya da Tokta Samasta Karma Nivedi Tatma Viki Vichi Kirsi Tome Dambrita Twam Paripad Yamano Mayat Manguyaya Chakalpateva. The living entity who is subjected to birth and death attains immortality. When he gives up all material activities, dedicates his life to the execution of my order, and acts according to my directions. This way he becomes fit to enjoy the spiritual bliss derived from exchanging loving mellows to me. For Krishna, obviously Krishna spoke, speaks this verse. He's speaking it to Uddhava about the three principles that make up the Vedas, Sambandha, Vide, and Prayojana. These concern one's relationship with the Lord and the activities of that relationship, as well as the perfection of life. And then this also describes the characteristics of the Lord's confidential devotees. That person attains immortality, in other words, they transcend the laws of birth and death. <laughs> and they enjoy spiritual bliss in loving exchange with me. Um, Krishna is like, we might use the example, Krishna is like fire. If fire is located in a distant place, depending on how far you are away from the fire, is the indication of how much you can experience the presence of the fire. So from a long distance, you may see the fire, but you can't feel the heat of the fire because of the distance. <laughs> Fire's quality is both heat and light. So uh, seeing Krishna or from a distance or being in relationship from Krishna in a distance 
gives you some indication of, of Krishna, but not enough to experience the happiness of that association. But as you get closer, just as you get closer to a fire, the light becomes brighter and the heat becomes more felt. And the closer you get, the hotter and brighter it gets. So in the same way, as we come closer to Krishna, by surrendering to Krishna and dedicating our lives to the order of Krishna, then we can experience the presence of Krishna. <laughs> And this is a very important verse that uh, only uh, only go to the next verse when I say so. It's not good to just jump ahead because I stop. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'm I'm thinking about what to say. So um, here again, uh, three of the principles. Sambandha, Vide, and Prayojana are the three relationship with the Supreme, activities with the Supreme, and the perfection of life. So the Vedas give uh, knowledge of these three departments, relationship, activity, and goal, like that. And Sambandha, in relationship to the other two, is the largest and most voluminous of the categories because relationship is the foundation for establishing the activities. Without coming to that level of relationships, the activities are not understood or not properly executed. When you get to Abhideya in the proper way, then Prayojana becomes natural, but Sambandha establishes Abhideya and Abhideya, I mean, uh, Sambandha is very diverse. There are different ways to establish relationships based, based on the object of the relationship. For instance, the relationship with the spiritual master, the relationship with devotees on different levels, the relationship with the material energy, and our relationship with Krishna in different rasas also. So there is diversity in relationship. Once one clarifies that relationship principle, then one can accept the orders of the spiritual master and execute them in a very uh, natural and very easy way. And that is called Abhideya or the process of bhakti. And that makes up hearing, chanting, and serving the Lord in uh, serving in according to the instructions of the spiritual master and hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And prayojana simply means love of God, the goal of the activities of devotional service. Okay, and this, this 11th canto is a very intricate part of the knowledge of bhakti because in this 11th canto, Krishna speaks a lot of this. Uh, 11th canto is made up of Krishna's words more than practically any other canto in the entire Bhagavatam. And he speaks a lot to Uddhava, uh, who is, as is mentioned here, a confidential servant. He's very confidential, so confidential that he can sit and talk to Krishna and, and Krishna talks to him in a very natural and very normal way. And he, he's been, he also been given certain services by Krishna that are very special that wouldn't have been given to any other person, only because of Uddha's, Uddhava's qualifications and his connection with Krishna. <laughs> And if you read the 11th canto, and after this all begins around the seventh chapter of the 11th canto, the first six chapters, I believe, are really the pro explaining this discussion by uh, 
King Nimi and the, the Nava Yogendras, the nine Yogendras, asking King, King Nimi different questions about devotional service. And then when you get to chapter seven, it sort of takes off. And it's a very powerful canto. Uh, sometimes we think, oh, we wish Srila Prabhupada would have been stayed with us longer so he could have did the purports in the 11th canto. But we have so, along with the devotees of Srila Prabhupada who have continued his work, we have the 11th canto commentaries by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. He's written a very voluminous book on the 11th canto, which is really deep in the knowledge and in the practice of Krishna consciousness. Okay, so these are uh, uh, these subjects we just covered in these three verses are really something very confidential. Krishna is giving that those orders that make that person very an intimate and a confidential associate. Okay, next verse. Ebi sarana bhakti lakshana suni sanatana aya hoitapaya krishna prema mahadana. My dear Sanatana, please now hear about the regulative principles for the execution of devotional service. By this process, one can attain the highest perfection of love of Godhead, which is most, which is the most desirable treasure. Hmm. So here, um, we have to understand that most of this chapter is spoken by the Lord to Sanatana Goswami. Now it comes right to that indication here in this verse. Now the Lord is going to talk about the regulative principles of devotional service. Um, and as, as it says here, by following this process, the highest perfection of love of God can be reached in which there is no desire, more desirable treasure than love of Godhead. So now we get ready for the next verses, series of verses. Kriti Sada Bhava Sadhya. I'm sorry. Kriti Sadhya Bhava Sadhya Bhava Sadhana Dida Bida Nitya Siddhasya Bhava Sya Vakatyam Riddhi Sadhyata. When transcendental devotional service by which love of Krishna is attained is executed by the senses, it is called sadhana bhakti or regulative discharge of devotional service. Such devotion eternally exists within the heart of every living entity. The awakening of this eternal devotion is the potentiality of devotional service in practice. So we're hearing about regulative devotional service Srila Prabhupada's purport. This verse is found in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, 122, which is nectar devotion. Because living entities are minute atomic parts and parcels of the Lord, devotional service is already present within them in a dormant condition. And as has been confirmed by many statements from the Shastras, we naturally have devotional service as our innate quality. It's there within our existence. Devotional service begins with Shravanam Kirtanam, hearing and chanting. When a man is sleeping, he can be awakened by sound vibration. Therefore, every conditioned soul should be given the chance to hear the Hare Krishna mantra chanted by a pure Vaishnava. One who hears the Hare Krishna mantra thus vibrated is awakened to spiritual consciousness or Krishna consciousness. Spiritual consciousness is Krishna consciousness in the real sense of the word. Prabhupada wants to clarify that awakening to spiritual consciousness means consciousness of Krishna. In this way, one's mind grasps and becomes purified as stated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaito Dharvanam Marjanam. 
when the mind is purified, the senses are also purified. Instead of using the senses for sense gratification, the awakened devotee employs the senses in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. This is the process by which dormant love of Krishna is awakened. So we're getting now, we're going back to the beginning in one sense, we are, and that is sadhana bhakti, uh, you engaging your senses in the service of the Lord. And then this is called devotional service. And gradually following this process, we go through different stages of realization and also different principles of practice until it reaches a pure love of God. So this is the beginning here, just giving, this is just an overview. So we, we see when people come to our temple, uh, we want to give them as much exposure to the process of Krishna consciousness through hearing and chanting. So kirtan is there, classes are there. So these two things are shravanam kirtanam, hearing and chanting. And when it's heard by a purified person, and then that way awakens one to speak. Just like we see many devotees or persons who come who have become devotees, in their first experience coming to the temple, they they actually had many realizations about Krishna consciousness simply by that first experience. Many of the times the realizations that these new people get are very high. In fact, they're on high platforms, but the reason why they get such high realizations sometimes in the very beginning or experiences, we shouldn't say realizations, experiences, is that because they're so open, there's no blocks. They're simply taking it in as they, as it's been given, as is being given to them, without any preconceived ideas. What happens sometimes is after we start becoming familiar with the process, we lose some of that, uh, what we say, newness, and we start to uh, uh, intellectualize and sometimes even uh, see the activities of devotional service as being just day-to-day -day ordinary activities. Mm -hmm. But you see that uh, a new man, a new person sometimes has ecstatic symptoms just by coming to the temple for the first time because they're completely open and the energy being pure, they absorb it directly. And a lot of them laugh, oh, that's all they need. And then they're, they're already connected and they're ready to come back and engage more and more. But the senses here are meant for being used in the transcendental living service of the Lord. The senses can take us to how the senses can take us to Krishna. Same senses. It depends on how the senses are connected. So here, when the senses become purified through regular hearing and chanting, then these senses awaken one's dormant love for Krishna. And the mind, which is the king of all the senses, the mind is the director and commander in chief of all of the senses. And therefore, that also becomes purified, as mentioned here, Chaito, Darpa, and Marjan. So this is the process. Now we will we'll be hearing during the next series of verses uh, more on the process of sadhana bhakti. As and these are important to understand. It's not just well, you know, I know all these basic stuff. We know, but at a lot, of, a lot of times there are many points that are being presented here that can help us in our practice of Krishna consciousness. Therefore, you can never hear too much 
of transcendental knowledge, spiritual knowledge, because in it itself, it's purifying. It's like uh, simply every time you breathe, and you get a fresh breath of air. And each time you do that, you're getting an experience of life's energy. Uh, so you've been doing that all along, but each one is unique. <laughs> so it's not like each one is the same, but each one is unique. So each time we hear about Krishna, just by the process of hearing, we're getting elevated. And of course, as the knowledge comes, we're also getting realization of the process, which means how to execute it more effectively or more, more regularly. Okay, so we're gonna stop here and open it up. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for a very nice talk on this. Um, and uh, uh, Guru, uh, devotees, if you have any questions, comments, realizations, please unmute yourself and uh, ask questions. And it would be nice if you can keep your cameras on while you're when you're asking questions and during discussions. Um, and uh, you can type it in the check box as well if you want to, and I'll read it for you. Thank you, Hare Krishna. It would be very nice if you keep your cameras on. <laughs> I get to watch Nittai Nataraj cooking every day. Hey, I just started. Okay. It's for the deities, right? Yeah, Raj, Rajbog. Okay, Rajbog. Good. They're trying to make like two sabji, one sweet rice, then chapati. Good. Nice. Thank you. Ananda Gopika, did you did you understand today's class? Hare Krishna. Yes, sometimes. <laughs> Some words I didn't understand quietly. Well, you just keep hearing, and then you know, the understanding will slowly Thank become you. more easy to understand. Thank you. Well, now we can see it. Any comments or questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Gauranga. Uh, Maharaj, actually, uh, today is my son's birthday. And uh, this is his uh, special uh, request that I should tell to you. He is very much influenced by you. So uh, he was asking, he slept uh, just at nine o'clock, but uh, he especially told me you should tell Guru Maharaj that uh, uh, I've got the small bead bag on the birthday. And uh, he wanted to show his beads to you. The small beads. The 27 beads mala. <laughs> so he started, he has started the. Hello. What's his age? He's seven years old now. He He's just finished oh, seven years old. So uh, on his special request, I uh, gifted him this and he wanted to show you. So uh, I am showing you, and he has started uh, chanting uh, this uh, 
uh, his job around from today itself. Good, good. Actually, actually, we we under we say that children should begin chanting regularly at seven. We say that is the age where they can start doing japa regularly. Before then, it's a little difficult. But good. Tell him I wish him the best on his birthday. I know it's very late, so the day is almost over. <laughs> yeah. But still, tell him I tell him I I'm, tell him I I'm so happy to see his beads and happy to hear that he's chanting and and I'm sure that Srila Prabhupada is also very happy with him. And if Srila Prabhupada is happy with him, he will, he will have so much happiness and success in his spiritual life. Yes, Maharaj, thank you very much. And I think by his curiosity, he himself has started inquiring more about, I think he, he hears one incident every day from me about either Srila Prabhupada, either right. you. <laughs> good, good. You are the perfect mother raising a child and making making him a devotee. And uh, he, he bought these two books for me as the return gift <laughs> of his birthday. He bought it for you? Yes. Yeah. This is a small version of the show Upanishad. And actually, he told me to choose that uh, you choose your return gift. So I drew this. This is the show Upanishad. This is a brief version of and Brahma, uh, Brahma Samhita. Oh, wow. Two very important scriptures. Yeah. Actually, uh, very nice. Yeah. So actually, uh, about the birthday concept, I was just trying to, he, he was, um, he sees this uh, other secular people, you know, enjoying the birthday. So I was just trying to convert the, you know, birthday concept into how you can, you know, uh, do it in a Krishna conscious way. So we brought, we brought a cake and I said, okay, you can first offer it to Krishna and then uh, you can cut the cake. Then the gift will be this, the mala, <laughs> the mala piece and the return gift that he, uh, so this is the concepts I was introducing to him that, you know, all this can be there, gifts can be there, return gifts can also be there, but it should be, you know, something potential. So. Well, he has the spirit that he's giving presents to his dear ones on his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so he was quite happy to uh, enjoy his birthday in a different way this year. So I'm, I'm sure he'll uh, continue that. Yeah, the, the Vedic culture teaches that on your birthday, you give everybody a gift. And the Western culture is on your birthday, you get all gifts. <laughs> 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 so he's very much in line with the truth. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for he's the... Sleeping? He, he, he's sleeping now? Yes. yes, he slept, Maharaj. It's late. He's yeah. 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 Well, it's it's about 11 o'clock there right now, right? Oh, it's, it's 10 o'clock. It's 10 o'clock, right? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, right, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. That was nice. Be sure and tell him I said best wishes. <laughs> yes. Sure, Maharaj. Completely. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Namrita Mataji. Devotees, we are waiting for the questions.
So Guru Maharaj, by the time uh, devotees are thinking about it, I would like to ask a question. And uh, I'm sure, um, I, you know, this is this is a very common question and uh, uh, you must have answered a number of times. I want to ask, like, when in the second verse, uh, 102, I think, uh, when Krishna says that, uh, you know, when we fully surrendered onto him. So how do we fully surrender? Because when the situations, difficult situations comes and uh, we, we cannot actually handle them with our intelligence and ability, uh, how, what can we think at that time that Krishna, I'm really, you know, my hands are up, I'm in your lotus feet. But how that thinking should be, you know, how should we practically yeah. fully surrender? <laughs> you, you just mentioned it. You just throw up your hands and say, my dear Lord, I'm yours. <laughs> and then Krishna does the rest. <laughs> In other words, you don't have your own plans for saving yourself or your um, plans for you, you just throw your hands up and say this situation mm, is is a wonderful opportunity for me to completely depend on you. Krishna's there. Something will happen. You may not understand what, but something will. Krishna is always with his devotee. And the more the devotee surrenders, the more they can feel the presence of Krishna. If you're throwing your hands up in the air and you're in a helpless condition due to being put in a particular situation, that's good. Okay. Yeah, so just leave the mind behind and just throw the heart towards Krishna, that's all. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. And if you pray, you'll get more of these situations. What do you mean by get more of this? <laughs> yeah, it means you get, you'll get more of a chance to fully surrender to Krishna. <laughs> what is it? Alishyava pinaratam punastamanga darshanam namaratam purutava. Yeah, whatever you want, I want. Whatever I want doesn't matter. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. You, just, you have your deities there. You just pray to your deities and everything will come become clear. I do feel every time I go and stand in front of Krishna, I just feel like, you know, I, I'm just forgetting everything and it just it's him. Nothing else matters in the life. But, uh, but yeah, <laughs> because mind is always, you know, thinking about that. Yeah. Wish we, I could have done this, I would have done this, I would have said that, I would have done, you know, if I could have done something, it would have improved the situation. But um, yeah, so that regret and guilty is there and always, you know, and that feeling that hope the situation would improve or uh, it wouldn't continue this the way it's going or stress or anything like, you know. It's hard to judge what is success and what is not success by what happens. Success really means to become completely dependent on Krishna. Whatever happens, I mean, you have to use your intelligence in order to surrender. It's not something easily understandable because the situation depends. But the, the principle is just, you know, and it's not my will, it's your will. Mm -hmm. I'm simply trying to serve you, but I don't know how to serve you. So you can guide me on how best I can serve you.
Thank you, Guru Maharaj. It's, it's very funny that <laughs> today when I was chanting and uh, I was thinking about it and I was thinking, how can I, how can I learn to surrender, you know? And this is the verse came up today and it's uh, so nice that, you know, I'm talking to you about this. And uh, one more thing I wanted to mention that when I was literally, because some, some things are going on in the mind and, you know, it's always agitation is there when you're chanting. And when I was looking at my lost ships, my Krishna and Radharani, they were smiling very nicely. And I was thinking, are you smiling that I'm in trouble or are you smiling that, you know, everything will be okay. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> so, so it's, it was so nice to still see the smile on their face. <laughs> yeah. The deity is, the deity is there. He smiles and sometimes he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes he talks to you and sometimes he ignores you. <laughs> <laughs> but he, the deity is Krishna. So if you, when you have that understanding and you, you act in that way, that this is Krishna. Krishna is our object of devotion. He's not our, he's not our order supplier. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. It was very helpful. Hmm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anyone else? <laughs> Uh, maybe, uh, let me see. Uh, yeah. Srimati, you can uh, maybe announce tomorrow's program. Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance as always to share with And Sundays. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Um, Guru Maharaj wants to start uh, tomorrow's class early um, by 30 minutes. So uh, I request you all to join um, instead of 4 p.m. UK time, it will be 3.30 p.m. UK time and it's 10.30 a.m. Eastern and uh, 9.30 a.m. Central time. Uh, hope uh, this class is for only for tomorrow, Saturday class. Um, again, from sun, uh, Sunday, we have a separate class. Yesterday, we announced uh, on Wednesday that um, there is a Central New Jersey devotees class uh, that is at 1 p.m. UK time. I'll send the poster uh, for Sunday class, but for tomorrow, Saturday, uh, you please join half an hour before. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Now we'll be doing a special class next week and we'll announce the day. Uh, that's a special class and we're gonna try to uh, inspire as many devotees to take to be on that class, it's, uh, it's very relevant to uh, the future of our ISKCON society in terms of our individual directions and how we will uh, see ourselves and see how we will engage ourselves in, you know, this is in Krishna consciousness. So. And now I'll explain more as time goes on. There'll be a special class next week, uh, and uh, we'll pick a day. It will be the most appropriate day. And I'm thinking either Wednesday or Friday of next week will be the best day. Probably Friday, next Friday. Okay, and it's based on a. Um, uh, recently, we're in the process of completing a book. It's called Natural Living. And the book is, 
in the process of being finished. And it, that'll be the subject matter of the class, natural living. <laughs> Okay, so thank you, and um, have a wonderful day, have a wonderful afternoon, have a wonderful evening, and for Namrata, have a wonderful, take nice rest, and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> and for Shimati, she's got her whole day in front of her. <laughs> It's only about 11 o'clock there, right? 11.30? 10.47, Guru Maharaj. 10.47 a.m. Yes, Guru I hear I'm 5.47 p.m. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, today they call a Makar Sankranti. <clears throat> yeah. What is it called? Uh, ma what is it, Makar Sankranti? Today is Makara Sankranti. Oh, yeah, today is Makara Sankranti. Yeah, so I would, yeah, because I think the, 